Hello again, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today we're going to be carving a stone. Not the old-fashioned way with a hammer and chisel, although I do like doing that. Today we're going to be using a Dremel tool, following a process that I developed for making uh, engraved stones for my friends. My sister Peggy loves her dogs. Her, the first dog that I carved a headstone for was Bruno. He was a big old red dog, strong as a horse, loved everybody. Now Gracie's died. Gracie was a pit bull. Not the kind that you read about in a newspaper. Gracie was a sweetheart. So today we're going to write her epitaph on a stone. It's going to say Gracie good girl because that's what she was. Watch and I'll show you how I do it. The first step in the process is to design the layout of the drawing. Now I've done letters and I've done some pictures, but today we're just going to be doing letters. The way I do that is I take a computer program and I print out what I want to say on the rock. Then to make the design stick to the rock so that I can use it as a template. Today I'm using uh, Weldwood Multipurpose Spray Adhesive. Permanent or Temporary Bonds Fast Act and Mist Spray. I've used poster cement. I've used scrapbook cement. Uh, I even used rubber cement, although I wouldn't recommend that. It does work, but it's really hard to get off. This, because I'm just going to be tacking this onto the rock, and having it hold in place while I use it as a template to carve through it gives me the outline of the shape and the letters. I'm only going to spray just the paper. You can see that the paper is getting transparent all the way through it. That means I got enough glue on it. Now I just set it aside, wait 15 minutes. This turns into scotch tape and I'm able to just lay it right out onto the rock. Works pretty cool. It's a long time figuring this part out. Because this is a little dusty, I'm doing it out in the garage with the garage doors open. The fine dust that comes off the rock <clears throat> has a tendency to kind of be suspended in the air. In my old workshop, I'd take the dust collector and hook it up. Here in the garage, I just open the doors and let the dust blow out. Got the back door open, wind's blowing through takes all the dust out and puts it on the hood of my truck. I'll have to wash that later. I have several different stones that I use. For big jobs, I got stones for a quarter inch air grinder that I use. Works quite well. I have this triangular stone. These wheel shaped stones are very nice for cutting around small sections and for veining. Like if I want to put a leaf in the rock, that does a good job of outlining the leaf and making the veins in it so it stands out. All of them are diamond stones. Some are more expensive than others. I try and buy them at Harbor Freight Tools. They're inexpensive, they seem to hold up pretty well, and they work. Because I'm working on straight sections, the R, the bar on the G's, the upper part of the D, and the L and the I. I'm using the larger wheel. Larger diameter wheels hold up better. 
when you're picking out your rock, this one is one that my sister picked out, but you want to pick out a rock that doesn't have quartz in it or calcite. Both of those are very hard. You can cut them, but it goes through a lot of diamond stones. This is sedimentary rock. It cuts pretty easily. Try and cut to the edge of the letter, and I'm watching. I'm watching the stone as it travels across, and trying to make sure that I just cut away the edge of the black. After I get down into the stone a little bit, I can start pressing harder and going a little faster. But right now, I want to just make sure and outline that edge really, really well. And I try and leave just a little bit of the black there. Because once you go past it, you've lost all your reference marks. The other thing I do is I try and use the rocks as steady rest. I'll show you a little better how that works. I rest the front edge of the Dremel tool on the rock itself so that I can use that as a support and help guide the tool. It gives me a little more leverage and lets me have a better grip on it. So I don't want the bit to catch and skitter away on me. It's all about control.